Well, it is Friday morning and we have arrived at the USDGC. It's kind of a chilly morning. The wind is picking up a little bit. It could be a challenging day. And by God, the leaderboard just changed around a ton from yesterday morning. Hard to believe what's going on. Not only that Dave Felberg is still on the lead card, <laughs> but that the young man, John Key, that's in the lead, this is his third PDGA tournament. Yeah, rated 880. I mean, wow. And I know there's a little bit going on with that story, but we'll find out more as the day goes on. And I mean, we're going to see what, what these golfers are made out of, put them on the lead card and see what kind of pressure they would be feeling. Well, the wind is up. The tension is up because we are getting really close to the final day. Before we get out there, though, let's go over and take an abbreviated course look here at beautiful Winthrop Gold. Well, we're now at hole number seven, the infamous bamboo hole. I'm about 6'2", and you can see this bamboo is one big obstacle. Doesn't matter if you try to take the hyzer route or the anhyzer route, you've got to deal with it. Now, this center stretch here, this is a 269-foot hole. The center stretch is five paces across, which is about 15 feet. Some of the guys will choose to come straight at it. Most people are going to try a high angle shot, either a hook thumb, a pancake, or a huge hyzer. This is a par three number seven, the infamous bamboo hole at the USDGC, 269 feet. And this is just another dangerous hole. 734 feet, par four, but the slope of the land and the yellow rope really come into play here, Liz. That's right, this whole corner, Billy, this is what you have to deal with. And here, there also, you know, a lot of the big power players will take this big hyzer line right off the right side, but they are growing up just like the rest of this course. The lines are tighter, tighter this year. It'll be interesting to see what some of them choose to do. Well, they can challenge that yellow rope. We'll move down to the landing zone because if you think this shot is dangerous, wait till you see the upshot. Well, Liz, this is the optimal landing zone. A lot of the players will bail out left down at the flat side where you can see the basket a little better, but it is a very tough shot. From up here, you're gonna have to hyzer in over that OB on the right-hand side and carry the OB, but just barely carry it because that green runs away. You're right, Billy. A player that can utilize both a forehand and a backhand on this hole will be able to absolutely get a, have at least a birdie attempt here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the look at the course. It's one of the most challenging courses in the country. And now I think it's time to go out and meet some of the players. Zach Newhouse, Indian Trail, North Carolina. Shout out to Dynamic Discs and Vibram Disc Golf. Cooper Arnold, Lawrence, Kansas. And shout out to my wife. Thanks for letting me play. <laughs> What's up guys? Drew Kirkner, Pulaski, Virginia, via Morgantown, West Virginia. Shout out to the West Virginia Disc Golf Association. My name is Ricky Nantham from Atlanta, Georgia. I want to shout out to all my A-Town peeps. <laughs> Spencer Wilkin from Illinois. Barry Schultz from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Greg Van Ness from Denville, New, uh, New Jersey. Skeet Sizeke from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Mom. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm Craig Nielsen from Hillsboro, Oregon. Shout out to my wife, Irma Lynn, and my two kids, Kelsey and Thomas. Thanks, guys. Mike Robinson, Davenport, Iowa. 
Robbie Olson, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Dana Vichy, Ottawa, Illinois, here to have some fun this week. Ben Calloway, Davenport, Iowa. I'd like to give a shout out to my sponsors, Iron Line and Discraft. Hey, I'm Lyle Updike from San Antonio, Texas. I want to say hi to my five kids, Benjamin, Annie, Luke, Molly, and Brig. Mike Kernan from New Orleans, go no team. Hey, Stephen Harrison, 31437 from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Shout out to all the homies down there and to my family, wife, and kids. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Brian Huff. I'm from Athens, Georgia. I've been playing disc golf for about a year and a half. First time here, enjoying it. Uh, Brett Allen, local. I guess you can say local pro, but that ain't happening quite yet. We're, uh, we're working on that. I've been playing about five years. Loving the sport. Came out last year and looking forward to playing this year. Phil Arthur, I don't know what I was going to say, but I'm here. I'm going to have some fun. Been playing 23 years. I'm going to catch up to these guys soon from Woodstock, Georgia. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> Well, my favorite segment, meet the players. I always love to meet a new human. Now for what they really want to see, Liz. Some live action from round three of the 2011 USDGC. Well, it is Friday afternoon. This is the lead card action here at the United States Disc Golf Championship Performance Edition. And the lead card is switching up again today. John Key made his way to the top with an 11 down. Well, 880 rated player, it's amazing what he's doing. And I don't know how nervous he is. I'm a little nervous for him with this wind. Oh my gosh, the wind is kicking up this morning. You're 100% right. Following John Key is going to be Bill Sharon. He's 918 rated out of Bowmansdale, Pennsylvania. And he's a hardworking player. He has traveled all around the country for this sport. Well, he was at the Memorial. He was at the Worlds. He's sitting eight down. And it's go time, Liz. Oh, you're right. This is going to be John Key on the pad, 880. Let's see if he can handle the wind and the pressure of being on the lead card. Oh, that's early, Liz. A little early, going to find some trouble in the trees. And he is in a position where it's going to be a tough up and down. Well, you know, his projected par here is a four, so he still has three strokes to work with just to get down to the bucket. Well, he's projected at an 89. Here's Bill Sharon. That's right, hardworking player in the sport. You know, he's, his player number is a, starts with a 44. He's right. new to this uh, whole organization, and I, he's made his way to the lead card at the biggest tournament of all. Little cabbage, and he's oh down. Oh boy, he's, he's rolling. rolling though. Oh, right up on a tree, and the first two shots have horrible lies. Again, you know, if he's going to have to get a three to make his projected par on this hole. All right, now let's see if Dave Feldberg, who's been playing hot all week, can tune out the bad shots that he's just seen, refocus his game, and try to play some golf. Well, he is doing an amazing feat right now. He's sitting seven under. His projection is 62, so he is doing all he can do. He told me he would be 19 under if it was the original thing. He feels like he would be walking away from it. Wow, and uh, he has to get a two here if he wants his personal projected par. That's a and great shot, Liz. He's inside the circle in the chip, about what, 21 feet away from the bucket? 21 feet, three and a quarter inches. That's right where Dave wants to be. Well, okay, now Dutch Napier, he is 996 rated, and actually he has, he just this year, last March, won the Louisville Classic. He plays about 17 pro tournaments a year, and he is a hard worker at this sport. Well, Dutch is a big part of Cloud Nine, which has been on the scene. It's a good looking shot right here, Liz. I like it. Oh, way to go. He oh, hit the he bottom hits of the, the pole. pole. Stops it. <laughs> Dutch Napier with an easy birdie opportunity. This is the lead card Saturday <laughs> or Friday afternoon, third round at the USDGC. All right, well, Bill Sharon here, his projected par being a 918 rated player is a three. So he's looking to nestle this right up to the bucket if he wants to walk out of here without any strokes to his scorecard early. Well, that's one tough lie. I mean, he's nestled up there and the wind's up. He's just, he needs to float it, but does not need oh, to Oh, you know, he is floating. He's doing great. Oh, that's great right where he wanted. All right, the sigh of relief from him, and we're going to check out our leader, John Key, who's over on the other side of the fairway. Well, this is John Key's third tournament, his third career tournament, and he's actually leading the United States Disc Golf Championship. So he's played, he, didn't he play one uh, AM event last year? Finished like, I don't know, maybe 20, 21, 22? Um, actually, uh, 20. Great shot right there from John. Absolutely, he's actually gonna get himself a birdie out of this hole. 
Well, Dave Feldberg walking up to his putt, and it has just got to be a test of his focus and his skill as an athlete. Well, it feels like it's, a, or it looks like it's a tailwind, but it's really a, a right to left cross on him, a little tail coming off of the lake. Yeah, you bet. He, he seems confident, though. All right, easily made for Dave Feldbrick as he takes his uh, two, which is actually a par for him. Projected par there, and that is very tough for Dave. But he's he's pulling it off here. Here's Bill Sharon now. And Bill's looking uh, to get a three with a great up shot. And I'd say, you know, that first shot after you hear your name, it's nerve wracking. And these guys have never been in this position. I can only imagine the sweat running down the palm of their hands. Well, can you believe it? Our leader here is going to take another stroke on the field as his he gets a birdie on his projected par. Well, this is his third tournament ever, and he's leading the USDGC. And we'll see if he can hold on as David Felber is going to put the pressure on him all day long. You the real story is You want the real story? Yeah. He has one for you. Well, we are on hole number five, the infamous hole five. That's right, Billy. This hole is a 1,053 feet. There's all John Olis. The... Oh, that's oh, a beautiful boy. shot, Liz. You bet. It's going to dig right in, and he's pushing the edge there. Great shot. He's down in the valley, uh, sets himself up for a wonderful approach from there. Next up on the tee is Charlie Coleman. He just won the International Disc Golf Center Championships. The PDGA Championships, actually. Aha, uh -huh. he's going to throw a forehand. That looks a little low. Well, he's going to get past the last row of trees. That's his goal. Hey, oh, no. How about just under the last tree? That's a bad lie for Charlie. You bet. It's going to, he's going to have to be forced to throw from almost his knees from there. David, Wigg David Wiggins Jr. on the pad now. now. He played the USDGC last year, and he just missed the cash line. Well, that's perfect, Liz. Right down the heart. That's a mid-range rock he's thrown. How pretty. He Every placed bit of, that uh, shot there. That's a 400, a little over 400-foot shot for Dave. And how about this guy, the ledge? Legendary LaVon Wolf. What a human. That's right. He's 967 rated right now. He's out of Alabama. He's got a huge fan following. Oh, look at this big, nasty roller. He put some edge on it. Well, he's throwing a driver roller there, and it looks great. Oh, that's going to end up just fine, Liz. Now, that's the second card here, hole number five. We're going to follow him down and let you see this magnificent hole. Charlie Coleman making his way out from that, underneath that tree. A great approach shot by him, very smart. Let's get up and take a look at LaVon Wolf's roller. Well, okay, this is LaVon Wolf now. The approach shot is really one of the tricky shots here. It's not necessarily the drive, but you, you have to make a good drive, but it's really all in the approach shots and what you choose to take here. Well, you want to try and get as close to the water's edge as you can. We just saw the legendary King Climo throw in the water twice, trying to edge it up there. So it is a very risky shot. You bet the wind has died down just a smidge since then. But again, when there's OB on your right, water on your left, it's a very tricky, a tricky shot for any player, regardless of skill level. This is level. trouble, Liz. He better hit that tree if he wants to be safe. Oh, that's wet. Oh, and I can hear the moan from the crowd. I mean, he really has a little gallery out here just enjoying watching him play. Tell you, what do you think all these fish think about this? I think they're dodging some of these coming <laughs> in. LeVon Wolf, now he's in on two, he's out on three. Again, this is a really tricky approach. You have to know your distance. You well, have he, to know what you want to do. You can't get... He's got a slight downhill lie, too, and throwing an Anheuser, that's a tough shot. He's oh, pulled it off this time, Liz. Definitely safe. It, it could cut roll, but it doesn't look like it's going to make it all the way to the water. Well, he's ended up right where you Phew. want to be down near the water's edge, but he didn't get far enough down. I don't think he can reach the bucket from there. Let's move on over now, as John Olis will have an opportunity to see if he can keep the lead. Well, John Olis out of Portland, Oregon now, he's sitting solid on the second card. Uh, he is a tricky shot. It looks like he, he, throwing forehand, he is going to oh, bring the OB advantage. into the into play here. Well, yes and no. I mean, he's going to actually throw this thing probably, it looks like the way he's lining up. He's going to throw it out over the OB. But with the big sidearm, it's going to come back in. And this is an advantage on this hole for sure. Again, he's only looking to get, you know, another couple hundred feet out of this approach shot. If he is too greedy, he could flip it over and go OB. All right, see if he's got the control he needs. Oh, he is well inbounds. That's a safe shot. 
Oh, it's, wow, it's right out. Oh, it's barely. The I wind tell picks you. it and pushes it out, Liz. I thought that had plenty of room to get back. The wind is rushing off of the road down towards the water. That's right, it just pushed it right out over the edge. Um, it looks like he's, I mean, he seemed like he threw it confidently. I think he I liked to it, Liz, until angle. the wind hit it. He could possibly take a lot of distance off of it, make sure he hits that big, fat part of the peninsula out there. Well, this is only his third PDJ tournament ever, so. Actually, I take that back. No. That's John Key. John Olis. That's right, John, John Olis. He's, he's a grinder. You know, he's 993 rated. He should know what he's doing. He's from Portland, Oregon. He's from the same town as Dave Felberg. Um, he's been playing actually nine years, started out with a 925 rating, and has been working hard all over the country to make him a 993 rated player now. Well, looky here. He's gone with a hook thumb here, and he's just going to get it up and down. And boy, I know he's wishing he would have done that originally. He's going to be in on two, out on three. He is going to be laying four right there. Next up on the pad is David Wiggins Jr. He threw a very well controlled shot. It looks like he knew exactly what he was doing when he placed that shot down. Well, Dave's got all the distance in the world and again, nice. Coming he's right not out of flip. taking very much of any risk here. He's just throwing the disc up the fairway, uh, keeping it well inside the lines. Well, that's another mid range. He's about 650 feet from the tee with just two mid ranges. Well, well Charlie. Charlie making a very wise decision. He knows that he can't make it all the way across the water, so he's just going to line, line him up for himself up for the next shot. Playing golf. Okay, next player in line. Everybody kind of threw their approach shots in nearly the same area. It looks like John's out next. Some discussion on the card here. You know, they've got a big decision to make right here. This is where they either decide to go across the water or whether they go out around this big patch of shul right on the corner. Well, I can tell you from what he's, he's looking, looking over. at, he is looking right at the bucket. Ew, he... He's every bit of 400, maybe a little bit more. That's right, he already has some OB strokes he's working with on this hole, but it looks like he's in control. If he can get it over the water, he will have a good chance to salvage a five. Wow, that's got enough power. That's going to go far deep of the bucket, it looks like. All right, well, he's over. And well, LaVon Wolf, a uh, veteran of the game, uh, Alabama member, he looks like he's winding up getting ready to go across the water. I'm telling you, this is, this is a max D shot of the wind. He's got a little bit of a tailwind. Oh, what a hop, skipping a jump there. That looks like it's got the right height. It's got the right speed. That looks like it's going to be safely under the bucket, Billy. Oh, that is a beautiful shot by the old man. Now up on the right side, you can see David Wiggins. He is ready to go. Two mid ranges here. He's got another mid range in his hand. He's just under 400 feet from the bucket. Well, he's about, you know, the basket is a little bit downhill. The wind is in his favor. You, that's got to get some that's legs. Trouble. It's got to get trouble. up. That's in the water. It just barely hit the other side. He is going back to his bag for another disc. Well, you know, he's got that power. You, you wonder why maybe he didn't just take a, a sharp edge driver and throw a big spike hyzer up and over the top of the trees because he's looking at this hole and he's saying, wow, I might take a four on this hole if I can get it under the bucket. Here's that sharp driver. There's the spike hazard I was talking about over the trees. He could have cut it inside the big flagpole up there on the bamboo. He's well over. We've got Charlie Coleman, a true oh, golfer here. Yeah. He took, no, that's gonna make it all the way across. Uh, he knew his distance. He knew that he could make it across from there. Well, hole five, a beautiful hole, an infamous hole. You see John Olis going in and getting his girl back. That's how close he was. These guys have made their way around to the green. Let's get around now to this 1,053-foot par five. Well, what a beautiful green this is, hole number five. It is one of the best greens out here. And this is John Olis. He's gone OB uh, on his drive, and then he had to, was forced to play it safe Actually, it was his second shot. He was in on two, out on three. Thank you very much. There's so many strokes in between. Over on five. This is four or six. And, I mean, it's just so peaceful all of a sudden on the green, Liz. I mean, right. where is that deafening wind we've had? Well, that's right. You know, up high, there's flags far above the surface here. And it is windy up there, but down near the surface, it's not at all. Well, it is a nice layup. That's going to be able to get him a seven for John. All right, well, as everybody else makes their way to their discs, there are 
A couple of good shots up near the bucket there is David Wiggins' second attempt at the green uh, on the far left edge of the green. He uh, here's is Charlie the... Coleman and Charlie, uh, Charlie actually was. Uh... All right, it's up. That looks like a good run. Oh, it hit all sorts of chains and fell out on the left side. That was for a par. Charlie laid up and got himself in position. All right, David Wiggins Jr. here. The wind did pick up just a little bit. This again is a very beautiful green. That's for a six. Oh, and it hits the top and falls short. David was in on three, out on four. He got to five there. He's also looking at a seven. LaVon Wolf, this. LaVon only lays three here, Liz. This is for an opportunity to get a birdie. He threw me. All right, it's up. Uh, Billy, not sure if LaVon, that guy was a birdie putt. There's a lot of shots that have gone on on this hole, but it was a great effort to get over. I believe it was for four right there. Okay, look at all those sad faces as they're looking in the water at this that they know that they're not gonna be getting back, at least for this round. Well, Charlie, gonna tap out. This is your second card on the third day. That's I mean, right, the, this is Friday guys, afternoon. If they can just make a move, these guys could be on the lead card for the final day of the USDGC. Dave Wiggins gonna move in now, tap his seven out, and then lay it next to the bucket, LaVon and John. We hope you're enjoying this live action from the USDGC Performance Edition. Well, you are watching players all over the place struggle with the OB lines out here, and I tell you, it's a tough course to play, but there was some live action from the USDGC. Oh, live action and live carnage at times. It is one tough day with the wind. Now, let's get you a keen look at 888, number 13, with Barry Schultz. Hi, I'm three-time U.S. champion Barry Schultz, and I'm here with your Keen Hole Review. And we're at world-famous 888, Hole 13, USDGC Winthrop Gold. Here we are. What's in bounds, what's out of bounds? Well, everything but that inside blade, inside strip of grass between the, the parking lot and that walkway is in bounds. And that's the only thing that's in bounds all the way up to the basket area. So what are your options here? Well, there's three main options. We got a lefty or a forehand or even a backhand roller out the left side, bring it back in. We got the most popular route down the middle, the one I choose more often than not, whether you're biting off two trees, three trees, or four trees, that middle shot is probably the most confident for most people. Or if the wind's quite right, or you got a big arm, you can go around all those trees and come back after the second tree in the parking lot and come back to the strip again. Now, the wind has a big factor here. So if the wind's up, you really only have one or two choices. If the wind's down, you can do whatever you feel comfortable with. The biggest thing is getting that tee shot inbounds. With stroke and distance, that tee shot is so important. It really doesn't matter what disc you choose, what shot you choose, or whatever you think you can get inbounds on that given day is the most important thing. So here we are. How many, how many trees are you gonna bite off? Me, I go for four. So here I am, in between the third and the fourth tree we're looking at off the tee. Now, we'll take anywhere in bounds. Ideally, we want to be on the left side of the strip so we have a lot more open shots. But if you happen to get stuck just over the curb or on behind one of these trees here, you may have to go the skip shot over the, over the parking lot area and skip back in bounds or the air shot all the way back in bounds. That's not the preferred route, but it's there if you have to take it. Ideally, you want to be down on this bottom or even a little bit on this upslope here so we can have a lot more open choices, whether you're a forehand or a lefty, lefty or a backhander like myself. I'll throw the leopard of the rock down the middle here. In years past, I used to try and get all the way up to the, pat, the top plateau off in the distance about 400 feet away. But these trees have all gotten bigger and those pines at the end have all gotten bigger too. So ideally where those guys are, where Mike is playing his disc right now, that's the ideal landing zone. Whether you're in the bottom or on the slope on the top, they both have advantages and disadvantages. Let's go see how we play from those spots up there about 350 feet away from here. All right, I'm in my second shot landing zone. That tree is... 400 feet away from the hole and 460 feet away from the tee. So two shots to get me past this tree to be reachable to the hole. 
And this tree at the top over here, caddy book says 276 feet to the hole. So I want to be somewhere in this area, whether I'm up top here or down on the bottom, it doesn't matter. I can still reach the basket, whether I'm going to skip shot it close to the basket or I'm going to bail out short and left of the basket. There's a lot of room over there left. If it's windy, that's the easiest place to go is bail out left. But if you're aggressive, skipping it off the pavement is probably shot to go. Now, the pluses and minuses of all this area is you want to be able to see your basket when you're throwing at it. And if you're down there in the gravel next to those pine trees and next to that ditch area, you do not see anything but a wall of dirt in front of you. And even though you're close to the basket, it's a much more difficult shot. Let's go see what it looks like down there. So here I am about 290 feet from the hole and I can just see the top of the basket, barely see the landing zone and I'm up on this upslope. But if I happen to get down there, what am I staring at? I'm still only 280 feet away, but I've got tree in my way for my stance and I can't see nothing. Fortunately, the USDG staff has put a flag on top of that basket so I can barely see that moving. But man, it sure is a lot more difficult looking at this wall of dirt. Let's go look at the green. Well, here we are at the green on 888 hole 13 with the gold. And you can see I'm about 100 feet from the basket, so this island is quite large. Uh, if you want to bail out, the prevailing wind is usually coming right at us down this parking line or a little bit more to that direction. So uh, the longer shots have to skip off this to come back inbounds. You've got to read the wind just right. I haven't talked that much about it, but on the first shot especially, on this last shot especially as well, this curb really comes into play. And let's see how big it is. Just a little bit smaller than a disc. So you're not going to get a low skip crawl over that. You're going to have to get some air underneath that if you want it to come in. So here we are, we got 40 or so feet to the right of the basket, 40 or so feet long of the basket, plenty of big wide open green, nothing in the middle but wind. So here we are, can you finish strong, get yourself a par or a birdie? And there you have it, hole 13, the infamous 888 Winthrop Gold Course, can make or break your round. You play the wind right, you play the curbs right, you make a putt, you could get a birdie. If you don't, you could get a double a triple or worse. One of those several holes on this course that can really make or break around. So you're going to need a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill next time you play it. Good luck. Now let's get over and talk about the USDGC Rock program with one of its members. Well, believe it or not, we've been able to track down the only Avery Jenkins. Now, Avery is here, not playing this week, just helping everybody out, yep. putting on a few clinics. He's going to be a uh, long drive distance exhibition on the final day. Yep. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. I'm sure you are. I know everyone else will be looking forward to it as well. Um, right now, I think we want to talk about the USDGC Rock Partnership Program and what it means to you to support it, and I mean what what the championship means to you. Well, first off, the partnership is, uh, I've been a partner on the USDGC Rocks for uh, like four or five years now. And uh, people that do know me, I, I collect a lot of discs. So that's the first off, I was in because I like to collect discs and I love to collect rocks, especially uh, much like a lot of the avid collectors on the partnership program right now. But um, on the other hand, it goes toward a good cause. It goes toward the USD Disc Golf Championships. And a lot of people see the, the overall picture of putting toward a good tournament produces good results and it's all about supporting a good thing and you know and all and everything else in a good disc golf major so that's why I'm part of the par partnership right now and uh, you know I increase uh, the payouts and try to give them a little more funds to what they can do and make this thing better. Sure you know there's so many people that participate in that program they're all listed in the program every single year it is a nice. very important part of, of the event. Um, Jason Hanby this year actually participates in he participates in this every year and this is his first time ever actually coming here Beautiful. so that's Beautiful. a huge story and people with the support that you're bringing in here and all the other pros that are here we just want to uh, say thank you for helping support the usdgc rock most, program most definitely my pleasure you know cool thanks avery can't wait to see you thank drive you. some it. across the lake looking forward to it see you guys there well i hope you guys enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about the partners that make this usdgc possible well 25 dollars at a time and these guys are spending thousands of dollars to make this event happen you bet and every year it just keeps getting better and better some live action from round three of the 2011 USDGC. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. Pause. Well, we've arrived at hole number seven and we're back with the lead card for the USDGC and we're gonna watch them attempt the bamboo hole. Well, let me just bring you up speed on some of the action that's been going on in this card. Over on hole four, the leader, John Key, only playing in his third event. He foot faulted blatantly from 18 feet. They called him on it. He missed his comeback. Got into his head a little bit because he took a nine on hole five. And these guys are really starting to battle. He's coming back towards him. Here's David Felberg. 
All right, he's in with no trouble whatsoever. He's looking at about a 15 footer. That's gonna be an easy two for Dave. Which I believe is his uh, projected par there. Now here's Dutch Napier, and Dutch is looking right now at getting up and down. He has really been playing good today. That's right, he's 996 rated. Um, he may have even touched the, that 1,000 rating uh, once or twice. He's out of Kentucky. He's a well-known player on tour. He travels with all these guys. Oh, that's not enough, Liv. Oh, it's not enough to get over, but it looks like it's gonna stay fair. Uh, again, I just wanna also say that he is sitting 18th right now in the National Tour Champion Point Series. All right, next up is uh, Bill Sharon out of Pennsylvania. Another hardworking disc golfer, a new golfer though. He's only been playing just a couple of years. Um, again, he is a versatile player and at this... Oh, well, that looks like that's got plenty to get over, but that needs to slow down, Liz. Oh, it's working. Oh, it's trying to get out, but it did stay fair. It's only about 22 feet away. There's a green flag right there. And now here is the overnight leader, 880 rated John Key. Now, you know, it's interesting. John actually broke his shoulder last year and played left-handed, and that is how he acquired the 880 rating. You're right. He's, uh, he's looks definitely good, not playing left-handed today and has not been playing so far this weekend as he just parked hole seven. Um, and if he cans this too, that's going to be an eagle for him on this hole. The opportunity for him to get some strokes back that he just gave away. This is the lead card on Friday afternoon. We're going to follow him down to the bamboo green. Well, okay, here we go. This is Dutch Napier now. He just caught a little bit of trouble on the outside of the bamboo. Uh, it looks like he has an angle to get inside, maybe with a stretch lean out forehand, or he can go up and over the bamboo. What do you mean? Dutch made this putt yesterday. One of the only ones I've ever seen made. He just did a straight putt over yeah, the bamboo. Don't, don't you wish we would have gotten that on film? It looks like he's going to take a little bit of a different approach today. A very difficult shot. Look at him work that putter oh. inside there. Boy, that was a good opportunity. Well, this bamboo certainly lines up some awkward looking putts. And it looks like Bill Sharon is moving in now. That's right, he put himself inside of the circle. His disc has certainly moved all over the place once it got airborne. Boy, even when it hit the ground, it stood up, it rolled around. We thought for a second there, it was definitely gonna be OB, but he's right. maybe, what, 21 feet, somewhere in that area? You know, just Felberg just walked by and confirmed the uh, call of the foot fault. And in any professional sport, you always have to follow the rules. And he did the professional thing. He let his buddy know that he foot faulted and simply following the rules. Well, yeah, Dave feels a little bad. He says, you know, I didn't do it on purpose. The guy fell over his mini. I mean, I had to call it. As we would expect any professional to do. All right, Bill Sharon cans his two. A great shot right there for Bill. That's going to net him. Here's Birdie as he was projected to have a three here. And now, how about this? David Felberg moving in only about 15 feet away, and the leader still yet to putt. That's just crazy. And so much pressure put on the shoulders of these super pros that are here. Uh, you know, this he's going to get a two. He's going to take a par. The guy in the lead is going to take a two, and he's going to have an eagle. It is a mental strain all week long for Dave. Well, for all the super pros, I mean, the challenge to stay focused for some of these guys is just uh, enormous. Well, Dave carts yet another two, and in the back corner of his brain, he just says, oh, another par, and moves on. <laughs> what a tough, tough thing to deal with on an all-week basis. Now, you uh, Dutch Napier, I see, uh, make up his little three-putt here. He did hit the front of the bamboo, tried to work something around the outside, and... I mean, it's, anything it's not that happen, long, it's but it's the wind that he's just picking up, and of course... Well, the lead card pressure, too, Billy. Don't forget the gallery, along with the cameras. Yep, it looks like a good day for spectating out here at Winthrop Gold. Oh, he's gonna cart a four as he walks off maybe with his head hung low. Uh, he's a, a, almost a thousand rated golfer. You do not expect him to miss a shot like that. He's upset with himself. Well, there's your leader, John Key, tapping in a birdie, actually an eagle on his projection. Dutch is gonna come down. This is live golf. This is Friday afternoon. And this is the lead card. This is USDGC 2011. Well, we had something uh, special planned for you. We were going to follow Ken Climo's group on this hole. And Liz, the champ, has pulled out. Uh, unfortunately, his arm's bothering him again. This is Cam Todd. Yeah, that's right. Cam Todd is a Discraft player, a well known player. He 
has been in and out of the scene. Wow, this looks like a long shot. It looks like it's coming in great, Billy. Just needs a release. Uh, it's going to be an easy three from there for Cam. Not really going to go at that. Now on the tee out of Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Here's Terry Miller. What a tough hole, and he is playing it uh, well safe. Boy, that's... What a nice little extra trajectory there. This hole's really tough, Billy. It's 22 feet downhill, and as it fades off to the left, it's a runaway green. It's well, 431 feet long. It's it, not an easy deuce. It's probably playing every bit players. of 380. It is downhill. Here's the big man out of Charlotte, North Carolina. This is Kevin Tritton. That's right. He played his way into this USDGC by uh, qualifying on Monday. He's been playing this course all week long. Uh, he was on the bubble and uh, he survived. And now he is just having the week of his life. He's done pitched it right where he wants, gonna get it over for an easy three. All right, Mr. Hatcher on the pad now. Started around uh, at three over, Kevin at four over. Terry Miller also four over and Cam Todd five over when this started. We're on hole 14 now. The wind has been brutal all day, Liz, and it is absolutely showing on the scorecards. You bet. I mean, the flag is whipping around down here. It's a tailwind, almost a cross tailwind. You have a large oh, that's, building. That is a dangerous shot. He gets it over the first yeah, tree around the building. He's lined up for a three. None of these players are going to be running a two. Well, we'll let him come on down. This is hole number 14, Friday afternoon, the third round from the USDGC. Well, all right, we've got Terry Miller now. He's also doing double duty this week with his own camera work. Uh, he's out of Wisconsin, and I think he's here definitely for the experience. Oh, beautiful as he just hits oh, on the sidewalk, goodness. scoots him right on down instead of having the death putt. He'll have him an easy little par three putt. Well, that's right, Millie. You know, this hole is a, it's a very difficult hole. Um, there's just so many variables, and especially when it's windy, all three of these players that I have laid up are probably just going to lay up for a nice easy three. Well, I mean, the story right now, the story of the day is not only John Key, who started as, you know, the leader, but Mr. Klima, the five-time champ, the living legend, having arm troubles again, Liz. He was unable to perform at the Worlds. He was unable to perform at the Beaver State Fleet. He thought he was healthy. I saw him this morning, and he was rubbing his elbow. I asked him if he felt okay, and he said, yes, yeah, not bothering me. But apparently, he was just trying to tell himself that because he has pulled out of the USDGC for the first time in 13 years. Well, I mean, you feel that twinge, and if, if it's not worth it to go on, you think you're going to hurt yourself further. There's no other choice but to pull out. Well, that was a great bid there by Kevin Tritton. As he went at it, he did stay inbound somehow. What an exciting group we get to watch now, though. Cam Todd, a, such a well-known putter. If, I'm sure he's going to lay it up, but I bet you he could just nail it. Well, if the wind was calm, Cam may be going for it. Mr. Hatcher is going to get up first. You know, right now, all you want to do is pitch this thing down there. The wind is brutal. Even if you make a great putt, you touch just a little something, you could roll OB, Liz. Well, it's the story of the week, OB, OB, OB. He played it safe. He, yeah. He's probably gone OB a handful of times already, and he does not want to mess this whole up. Well, here's Cam, and Cam's going to do the same thing. The wind is brutal right now, and that's exactly what he's chose to do. Oh, a little hoppy there. But they'll have easy drop-ins. This, this is actually the fifth card. They teed off this morning at 11.40. The final tee was 12.20, and Cam Todd is... He is in as a sponsor exemption, and Cam Todd is limping. I'm not, we, we thought earlier he might have been limping some, but he is noticeably limping. One of his buddies, Jeremy Colin, coming over to him now. And one of our super pros pulling out, it looks like we, it looks like Cam's gonna try to tough it out, but we may have another situation. Well, it just goes to show you how brutal of a week this is. It's a long week, it's a hard course, and I mean, these guys are stuck out here for five or six hour rounds. <laughs> Terry Miller giving us the double fist pump, some big action for the camera. He knows it's rolling. An eight, he's, uh, he's rated 888, so I believe that would be a birdie on his projected score on this hole. Well, if Kevin is, I mean, if uh, uh, Terry's rated 888, that's because he's been playing left-handed the last couple of years, because I played a lot with Terry, and he's got plenty of game. All right, good putt by Kevin Trenton. Never had a chance. Sounded great, hit dead center, spit right out the right side. Oh. Well, let's clean it up, Mr. Hatcher. He's Take your three and walk on. Absolutely. Cam Todd now, and you can see he is noticeably limping. Uh, I don't know if he's twisted that ankle or if his knee's bothering him, but you know, he's just now back on the scene, and the last thing he needs is an injury. 
Yeah, well, we are going to find out. We'll let you know what's happening. That's some live action here from the USDGC Friday afternoon. Oh, it all comes to a head tomorrow. Well, Liz, we're going to give them some more live action and we're going to give them exactly what they want to see. Possible carnage or possible great shots here on the infamous number 17. That's right. This hole has seen numbers like 21 that we just heard from a player that walked by. It's also seen a handful of twos. It's just what are you going to take on the hole is the question today. The basket is in the right position. Uh, yesterday it was in the left, so it does grant a little bit of ease there. but. For the well, most part, this is a tough hole through and through. We're going to pick up the second card here. This is LeVon Wolf, Charlie Coleman, Dave Wiggins Jr., and John Olis. And to start the day, LeVon and Charlie sitting at six down, Wiggins at five down, and Olis at four down. Now, this is number 17. I see John Olis making his way to the T, Liz. And I tell you, the wind is brutal out here. I'm not exactly sure how much of it he can feel tucked in. Well, I mean, you can look at the flag at uh, near the basket or the T area, and it's barely moving, but the flag by the basket is just rippling. Well, David Wiggins Jr. reminding him apparently, and, and I got to let you guys at home know, 888, little Dave Wiggins Jr. on the green and two shots. Wow, that is just amazing. He has, still has the pad. Uh, can, now, David Wiggins Jr. is the only projected two putt here. Can you imagine the pressure that he's got to be feeling? I mean, he's expected to get a two, and he, whoa, he threw that hot. Actually, he, he has a three projection on oh, this hole. right, he's down there. He is safe. He has a three projection on this hole, and uh, I, all the guys have a three projection on this hole except for LaVon Wolf. Now, here's John Olis. Yeah, he's out of Oregon. He, there, everybody in Oregon seems like they know how to play disc golf. It's abundant with disc golf courses, lots of great tournaments. He's going to choose a forehand because there, I believe there's a much bigger bailout zone. Oh, over you right. are correct, Liz. And he can sort of kind of uh, take the tight angle with this forehand because he's going to be working away from the water's edge. Well, he well, that's really up put and this that's, mm, that, that is looks really like it's aggressive. Great. Nice shot. It sure did look risky coming out of his hands, but he is nearly a thousand rated player. He knows what's going on. Well, that was a truly aggressive line. Now here's Charlie Coleman and Charlie also with a projected four on this hole. Yeah, and he's real looking quick at that player. flick too. All right, it seems like he's most comfortable with the flick. He threw a well, lot of flick Liz. shots. Ooh, it's hunting for the water. Charlie's in on one, out on two. Good attitude there as he just sort of gave himself a little clap there. This is uh, Yeah, he's a real quick player. Get ready for this to come right out of his hand. Much better angle, Liz. Oh, it's got to get over those hay bales, though. He oh. went OB again. Overcompensation in on one, out on two, and on three, out on four. I've got to believe he's having a tough round. We got a chance to watch him throw a little bit on 888, and he had a few OB strokes there as well. Well, he's a primary, primarily a sidearm thrower, but I mean, uh, he's got two in already. I mean, how many does he have? This is trouble as this well. This one looks good. I, I don't know. I think it's going to catch that sweet spot of the green. Right in the fat part of the green. Oh, boy. LaVon Wolf, he is, uh, seems like he's struggling a little bit out there. Yeah, he said he's uh, thrown some bad shots today, but he's got such a strong mind. He's going to keep himself in position. Well, strong minds are needed on this hole especially. That looks like it's going to uh, uh, come gonna to be, the green. It's going to be tight. It's got to get down. It's that wet. is O, B for LeVon. And the wind is just whipping down there. I mean, I, I got to feel like from his position with a headwind, he was hoping that thing might lift a little, might turn. That just hunted the left corner of the, the postage part of the green. And now there's LeVon just standing. Now he's saying, what do I do now? And now it seems like a straight headwind at the basket. Up by the green, they're feeling it a little bit more that uh, all the limbs of every tree are moving around and what a scary place to be. Well, here goes LeVon and, well, I tell you, you absolutely have to be careful here. He's all got right, that one really high, Liz. Well, it's a lot higher, but it's going to Oh, it's hit running out of speed. Oh, and it hits the hay bales and falls just short. I tell you, in on one, out on two, in on three, out on four, throw in five. Uh oh, it's what a feeling that a golfer has when they walk back to their bag one more time to get another disc that. I mean, he's already he threw it in the water. He threw an OB. Well, you know, and you've got that situation now. I mean, 
he just threw what looked like a putter and then maybe a mid-range and now what's he going to do i mean uh, is he going to go to a sidearm is he going to, he is going left handedly as all right well that's i mean it may be out of disgust i'm not sure exactly of his game it looks yeah it sure is that's a good looking shot yeah it sure is now can that you is imagine in the bailout zone. Oh, Liz, he doesn't get over. He's in on one, he's out on two, he's in on three, he's out on four, he's in on five, he's out on six. He's oh. now throwing seven, Liz. What does he do, Liz? I mean, he's out of what he's comfortable with. Well, I think if I was him, I would probably take Liz, that he's good. going lefty again. Can you believe this? No, I can't. I think he's got to take a breath here and calm, calm himself down. Well, it was a good, clean shot. But I, I dare say that Levon has not practiced this whole left-handed. That's yeah. trouble, Liz. That one is oh, he is within three. Lead, Liz. He's in on one, out on two, out on three, out on four, out on five, out on six, out on seven, out on eight, and he is now throwing nine. All right, Levon Wolf wrong. again here. Another left handed shot, Liz. Well, again, this is just a lot of groups do see this happen throughout the week. Oh, this, shot, this, one, Liz. this shot is absolutely safe. Oh, oh, oh he God. almost goes out the okay. back side, but he stays safe. And we're going to have to do a little math and break the machine out to see where Levon is going to end up. Let's get on down now to the green and see if the adventure continues. Well, as you can see here, everybody is friends here at the USDGC. Everybody wants to help somebody out, especially after watching what just happened there, Billy. Oh, well, you're talking about a living legend. Uh, I just love Levon. He's a great player. He's a great human being. It's just hard to watch. I mean, you know, he, he's he's played forever. And look here, he's just told Charlie, just go ahead, just take your putt. I, I'm not ready to go. Yeah, well, what a good move, too. And even for Charlie to step up and take that and give him that extra space, that's a very sportsman, sportsman, sportsman-like move. <laughs> well, now, LeVon, he is gonna, you can see, we told you just how close he was to skipping out on the back. He's taking a meter from the inside. All right. He's right up against the hay bales here, and this is every bit of 50 even, feet. Can you even imagine what he's thinking right now? Although we just saw Cam Todd make a putt from over there. Well, we saw today Ken Climo take the biggest number in the history of his professional career. He took a 10 on hole five, and Levon Wolf is fixing to take an 11 on hole 17. All right. Well, it seems like David Wiggins Jr. threw his driver over here so long ago. It's wonder if he still has the focus and energy to make this putt. Dead center, Chastity Belt never had a chance. He's okay. gonna take a three. Well, John Olis stepping up here to make his birdie attempt. Well, John is in position right now. He just, you know, these guys are fighting to get to that lead card for tomorrow. This is the third round, 17th hole. I mean, one more hole, and these guys are gonna be seeing exactly how tomorrow's gonna to add up. Oh. It was a good attempt. It looked high at, in the beginning, but he is dealing with the tailwind here. No, that never had a chance, Liz. It only hit about seven or eight rows of chains. Well, as all these guys tap out, it's going to be a, it's actually a short walk to the next tee, but... Well, now that the day's end is coming close, let's get over and see who Miss Liz Carr was able to run down for some post-round interviews. Well, I've tracked down the only female player here at the United States Disc Golf Championship for the Innova post-round interviews, Paige Bierkis. How, how, first off, where did you qualify for this event at? I qualified at the High Plains Challenge in Fort Morgan, Colorado. Awesome, and now this is your first time coming to the USDGC. Have you ever come in the past to be a spectator, or this is first and first? This is first and first. Yeah, and are you having a good time so far? Yes, I'm having so much fun. I've met the nicest people. Yeah, that's really. that's really important. Mm -hmm. And now, where are you standing right now? And first off, what is your projected score? My projected score is 87. 87, and how, how do you feel you've been, have you been hitting that target, or are you coming up a little bit shy, or? I'm not, I haven't been doing so well. Like. I've been doing good, and then there's just like two holes that ruin everything. Well, usually. a lot of people are having those stories. What holes are they for you? 17 and 13. 
Well, we saw some big carnage on 17 today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't good. Well, I know a lot of guys are really uh, astonished that you throw so well and so far and that you are so young. How old are you? I turned 15 last month. 15, all right. Well, you're catching up to all of them. <laughs> and uh, is there any advice you want to give to anyone that is going to play this course next year? Um, don't be too risky. I mean, I bet you're pretty sure that's what everybody says, but seriously, you don't want to go too crazy on this course, for sure. There's a limit of what the craziness you can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There's advice. Don't get crazy. Paige Bierkis, thanks so much for your time, and good luck tomorrow. Well, I've been able to catch up with Ken Climo. A little bit of recent news. You had to uh, pull yourself out of the tournament because of a few elbow issues. Um, I know everybody uh, that was viewing is going to be let down by the, not being able to see you, but you know you have to be aware of your uh, pain tolerance. And uh, can you tell us uh, how it happened when you made the decision to pull out? Well, it's been going on for the last four months, and I thought I was over it. I let it heal for about two and a half, three months. I was able to play the Augusta tournament without much pain at all. And it wasn't 100 percent then. And I knew I might have been going back a little too early and out here you're throwing pretty hard a lot and about the 11th hole you know I was four or five four or five holes before that I started feeling it and I played a few more holes to see what happened and it started to get progressively worse and it's really not that bad right now but I figured if I stopped right then I could nip it in the bud and not have it be another three month ordeal maybe you know a couple of weeks to a month this time well absolutely more manageable you know this is a really uh, repetitive sport and it's a uh, somewhat something that everybody needs to be aware and take care of their body and their joints and everything at the same time and still try to perform out on the golf course so for sure um, it sounds like a wise decision that you've made I know you let down uh, everybody that really really wanted to see you and get a chance to play with you but you know I've you've got to take care of it never quit a tournament in my life and I did it this time just because I want a future yeah I absolutely wanna, I just want to ruin it forever Absolutely. Well, it sounds like you made the right decision. Um, I don't want to give you too hard of a handshake, oh, but it's okay. I, I stopped quick enough this time where it does, it's not as bad as last time. It's uh, I could feel it was going to, to, to be there if I played the final part of that round and the last round tomorrow. It would probably got to that point, so I just didn't want it to get there. Any future plans right now as far as uh, what you're going to do to get it back into playing mode again? Well, we got a bit of an off season coming up here, so. I think off season some and some baby time some, some baby time and some some weights and some it's a few nights in the rocking chair might give it some uh, rehabilitation you know a little bit of a little bit of strength rehab and stuff like that i think i'll be fine Just sure give it a give it a couple months it'll be all right any advice for the players still uh, having to go through the rest of today's round and tomorrow's round yeah, keep your head together and keep between the yellow ropes <laughs> all right well, some pots. <laughs> well there you go that's ken climo signing off from the uscgc Hello and welcome to the DGU wrap-up show. It's been a topsy-turvy day on the board and out on the course, Liz. You bet. I've seen a ton of red flags today. Everybody's going OB. There are people that uh, are getting a little bit lucky. It's all about the performance score today. And I mean, we've had some hot performers out there today. Uh, well, top performers on the, on the course. And we've also had some of our top performers, what we call our super pros, have to pull out. Mr. Ken Climo, no longer a part of the event. Mr. That's right. Lucy Maresma, no longer a part of the event. We're not sure. We're here, and Phil Arthur is no longer a part. And I don't know how Cam can play again. He limped around this course all day long. He was limping around, but boy, did we watch him make some phenomenal putts as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this board here and where we're at. This is the DGU headquarters. This is where all the calculation goes uh, goes on. The TD is back here, co-TD. This is where everything happens. Uh, and on this board here, this screen, it shows all the rounds, their performance score, their projected score, and where they're sitting overall. So. Right now, we have a new leader for the tournament, Bill Sharon, out of Pennsylvania. He is 10 down for his performance score, and I tell you, that's hot. Bro, he shot a 73 today. He got him, came into the round at even par. He's now 10 under, four strokes ahead of the leader this morning, who we're not sure. He, we've heard he's only played three tournaments, but from what I have heard, he has a shoulder injury that actually inhibited him from playing last year, so the data is a little incorrect on John. Right, you know, a lot of this is, is here saying we will definitely catch up with him and make sure we get the right story, but right now, uh, he's sitting in second place. He dropped off a lead, but he's only four strokes away from it, and again, we're looking for performance score here, so really anything can happen tomorrow. Well, moving up into third, an All-American disc golfer out of Augusta State, 
Patrick May. That's right. He's getting a lot of airtime too this week. He's uh, just benefiting from being on some of these top Super Pros cards, and I, I have to believe that you know seeing that and learning from the Super Pros, maybe that's helping his game out. Well, he's sitting at four under now in the last spot on that lead card tomorrow. Dana Vici. That's right, Dana. He is a regular face here at the USDGC. He's cashed he, before. He has cashed, and he's actually, uh, I believe, the only player out of the top four on the lead card that has even really experienced the USDGC as it was before. Well, Dave Felberg still tied with Dana for that last spot, but he'll be on the second card lurking after the win tomorrow. We've got one day left here. This is the DGU headquarters. Stay tuned with us. We'll be here till the last putt drops at the 2011 USDGC. Take very slow a couple steps and they'll just explode at the end. That'll help you get through the shot. It'll help you not fall off of the shot. It'll help you stay over top of the shot. So as Ken said, we're going to do this putting clinic. Well, we're going to teach you the exact same techniques for putting.